know you lot. Remember this place? Haven't been in here for a while, have we? Um, I'm going to do a quick video on water-based true fire. Um, I've been asked a, a bit about it. I'm no expert at fire. Uh, far from it. I can um, I can do it, but um, there's people out there that are way better at it than me. Mike Lavalley, um, for instance, uh, he made this style of um, effect very, very popular. Um, he kind of pioneered it, really. Um, I mean, there are others that do it as well. Um, and there are loads and loads of tutorial videos on YouTube or um, DVDs that you can buy um, and what have you on this subject. So um, they all use solvents, though. Uh, I, have, I haven't seen somebody do True Fire with water based paint, uh, mainly because of the vibrance. Um, with water based paint, it can tend to look a bit muddy. Um, and if you use solvent, it looks way better. Uh, it really pops, especially under bright sunlight. It really does shoot back at you. Slaps you around the eyeballs, you know. Um, so water-based is a bit tricky for fire. Um, it's always best to go solvent if you can, uh, because it's a much better result. But uh, you can get perfectly good results using water-based. Um, so... With that being said, I thought I would tackle the, the water-based side of things, because me being the water-based kind of guy. So we're going to use Wicked paints, because they is wicked, in it. So, um, got a sheet of dye bond here. Um, for those of you who don't know what dye bond is, it's, uh, it's like plastic with uh, a millimetre of aluminium on the front and back. They use it for road signs and stuff. Uh, very handy stuff. So, um, True Fire works best on a black base. Um, I've seen people do it on white. It's very, very tricky though. They um, most people use black to do like a kind of smoke effect on the outside edge, um, which is really effective if you can put it off. But it ain't easy at all. Um, so first off is I'm gonna prep this panel and scuff it up with some 600 wet and dry and uh, and spray it black and uh, we'll take it from there. So there you go then, um, panel's black, it's a bit streaky but um, I'm not worried about that, this is only to demonstrate something, uh, it's not a, for a customer or anything like that. Um, usually if I'm doing something this big I'll take a bit more time over the base so you don't get those streaks but hey ho like I said it's just a quick tutorial so that'll do as I mentioned we're going to be using Wicked Detail Paints um, and as I said before um, water based can um, turn a bit muddy when you're doing True Fire um, as I mentioned I'm no True Fire genius I'm, uh, I'm not brilliant at it uh, I can get by um, but there are plenty of people out there who are better than me. Uh, like I say, Mike Lavalley uh, does a DVD. It's uh, it's very good. Uh, I've got that. It's, it's pretty damn cool. Um, Craig Fraser, I think, also does a, a True Fire one. Everybody's got their own way of doing it. Uh, they are all very good. Um, I suggest you go out there and and look at as many people as you can who do true fire examples um, and then you can pick the method that you like the most and also a lot of people tend to think that once they've got the um, the process in here then uh, that's it they can do fire it's, uh, it's not the case at all unfortunately um, true fire is is very artistic you um, you need to be very creative with it um, in order to get the, the flow right. Um, some people use the stencils too heavily and uh, and it looks like seaweed. Um, I've, I've done that in the past, it's easily done. You can just get carried away with a stencil sometimes. Um, so uh, so this video is just intended to, to just give you the, the process I use to, to do it. Um, and then it's down to you and your creativity to, to see what you can then produce with the method, if you know what I mean. Anyway, enough waffle, let's get it going, shall we? So the, uh, the Wicked paints I'm going to use for this, um, there's not many. Um, 
some True Fire kits have like loads and loads and loads of colours in them, but um, I'm not going to use a lot for this. I've just got some some wicked detail yellow if it will focus. Wicked detail yellow. Some detail carmine. Some trusty detail white. And of course, some other wicked reducer. So, uh, just going to use those for this, nothing else. Um, so, to start off with, um, we need to use yellow to, uh, to lay our background flames. But uh, the detail yellow is extremely transparent, it won't show up on the black. So, what we're going to have to do is put some white in and then add some yellow to it to make our yellow. So let's do that. I'm going to use five drops of the detail white. With five drops of the detail yellow. Twenty drops of the reducer. That makes that kind of pale yellow, yellow colour. And hopefully, because that's a mixture of white and yellow, it's got the white in it, which is opaque, uh, it should show up over the black. Now, I've got various stencils here. Um, you can buy True Fire stencils loads of places. Um, that one, that's not a True Fire stencil, that's just a general shape one, but. Uh, I have like these ones as well. I don't think you can get these ones anymore. Um, these ones were made by uh, my mate Beach Curtis over at Organic Image. Um, but uh, I don't think you can get them anymore. Um, but you don't have to have True Fire stencils. You can just cut a a squiggly shape out of some card or whatever um, you know, just say so you got some curves or what have you so what you're going to want to do first is to just lay out a rough pattern for your flames um, I won't use any stencils at this point because uh, this is going to be the um, the darkest red flames at the back in the background so um, just just do a general flame pattern for now um, You see, you can actually see that against the black because we added the white into it. Love the area with a bit of colour, and then we can just go in and form our flame shapes. It's almost like drawing a a few snakes on here, kind of thing. You know, you're doing squiggly. Um, vertical lines but you don't want to do too many of course because that's just gonna kill it that's gonna be too busy then
around the edges maybe you could add a little stencil but like I say these flames are the furthest away so no, I wouldn't just make sure you get a nice basis for some flames little embers and stuff That should do. So there you go, that's the sort of pattern I've done. Uh, now we need to flood that with some red. So we'll put that up there, we'll just apply a bit of heat to make sure it's all dry. One thing I have noticed though, looking at the camera there, you see how it's wider at the top here than it is down the bottom. Flames don't do that. They start off wide at the bottom and then go up in a cone shape, don't they? They get thinner as they go up. So um, always think of the flow of it. Um, you know, I'm going to need to add some more down the bottom there because it just doesn't look natural. That's a tricky thing with fire, you've always got to think about the flow of it. You know, always keep it in mind how would it look in real life because if you get that wrong even if your fire is good it just won't look the business you know just by adding a few little strokes down there that looks much better doesn't it so now we'll color it with some red now to color it I'm gonna leave that yellow mix in my uh, other airbrush um, because we're gonna use that again um, not all of you have got two airbrushes but uh, if you haven't just get a little like a little plastic disposable shot glass or something I use those sometimes or a little pot anyway just empty the the paint into the pot to keep it um, because you're going to use it again. But I've got more than one airbrush so uh, I'll leave that in there. I'm going to use this um, Badger Renegade Chrome and I'm going to colour this red. You don't need a, a detail airbrush for this bit because of course you're just flooding in some colour so any airbrush will do you, yeah, you know. Okay so to colour it in red I'm going to use some detail carmine. And I'm going to over reduce this um, to try and make it act like a candy. Um, so we're going to reduce this four to one. Four drops of reducer to one drop of paint. What do you 
mean I'm childish? <laughs> okay, so that's given us a very watery carmine red mix. So now we'll just lay that over the top. Important to note here though, if you're using solvent and candies, you can just flood the panel, no problem, because um, candies don't show up that well. I mean, over black, they will a bit. Um, but water based will show up way more. That's how you get the muddy look. Uh, you know, if you flood it, then the black turns brown in the end. So uh, keep this over your flames. Don't just flood the whole panel like up here. You know, I haven't done any flames up here, so I won't be putting any red up here. Just keep it over what you've done. There you go. Extreme zoom mode. Uh, you'll see some. You'll start to see some really nice color transitions just here. You've got the original red part that I did down there and then you got this yellow that I've laid over the top and you can kind of see the start of the transition there but once I add this yellow and carmine mix over the top Okay, so the um, the wicked colours I'm going to use for doing this, um, I'm not going to use a lot. I've just got some uh, some paint on the floor. 